you sold, not told. So what? Uh, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm just looking at it like that, waiting for the moment when you got time to chill. Uh-huh. That is my line of chat. I'm up before the sunrise, first to hit the block. Little bad motherfucker with little a pocket block. full little of rocks. Bad motherfucker. Don't throw them things, get the skinny little ass kicked. A nigga laughed till the first motherfucker got blasted. Put the nigga in the casket. Now they cover in the casket, the casket. On a regular fuck when it counts. I'm trying to make a million dollars out of quarter ounce. On the five boat. Fuck them hoes. Got a 45 screaming out survival. Can I lay low? Put some yay yo. Holler one time when I say so. Don't wanna. I'm hitting fences. Knocked on a nigga back. Missing me by inches. And they say, how do you survive when 165 in the city where the skinny niggas die? Tell mama don't cry. Even when they kill me, they can never take the game from the young G. I'm straight balling. Yeah. Uh-huh. Straight balling. Waiting for the moment when you got time to chill. Straight balling. Yes, indeed. All right, now I need to do this. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm just getting some things together. Some motherfuckers want to look on the curb for the niggas that deserve, but if I want to make a million, got to stay dealing. Dead snakes are killing, dressing down like I'm dirty. On the block, it's a clever disguise to keep it running from the cops. Hi. I don't get no ends. I'm in a bucket when I'm riding. Can I get some ends? I'll hit the strip and never music bump. Drinking liquor and I'm looking for some hoes to fuck. Dress and die like the money. To live for illegal as a slang another ounce. I wish it was a kilo. I need money in a major way. How the fuck my P.I. getting paid. There we go. That's what I'm saying. To all the motherfuckers calling. And me and my motherfucking thug niggas. <laughs> we straight balling. There we go. That's what I need right there. Okay. Now I got everything. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Let's get ready to do this. Straight balling. Waiting for the moment. I need to update one more thing, and we good to go. And if I don't, I damned if a nigga do. So watch the young motherfucker pull a trigger just to raise up. But don't let them see you cry. Dry your eyes, young nigga, time to do or die. Still on my pocket, ready. Time for a nigga to even cop. Seen a motherfucker peep game at point blank range, but I'm clapping on the dang. Can the damn thing change, cranking them dice? Okay, I'm about to turn my volume up just for you, and this shit better work. It's like both catch A's from a. Oh, wait a minute. How about that? Is that better? I had the shit muted. <laughs> Even when they kill me, they can never take the game from a young G. I'm straight balling. My bad. <laughs> oh, motherfucking day long. Stay strong. All right, y'all. Let's get ready to do this. When you got time, chill. Straight balling. We're going to finish out this last verse, though. I can't not, not do this last verse. Love you, waiting for the moment when you got time to chill. To my niggas in the penitentiary, locked up like a motherfucker when they mention me. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> motherfucker ever born. And once again, it's on. I'm busting on you bitches till they gone. Or who the hell can you get to stop me? I'm in the projects, parlaying with my posse. <laughs> I'm trying to, but these jealous niggas are trying to fade me. I was blaring out, my brother blast back. Man, I tell you, I miss me too, some Tupac, boy. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and let's get this shit going. Y'all looking for me? We done started out with that Tupac. But either way, y'all looking for me? Well, I ain't got to turn on the camera because here I is. Hey, what's good? Click that like button and come on in. 
click that like button and come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Uh, and click the share button. Uh, now here I is, here I go on another show. And this is the relationship we have though. Even though I'm talking about a few different things, I still got the UGA if you know what I mean. Then that means you subscribe on that side, which is the VIP side. So who riding? We riding, doing yet another show. And this is another flow off the top of my dome. That's what I'm doing from my home. Yeah, I'm here and y'all are at home too. Or you wouldn't be able to see me because y'all niggas ain't got internet like that. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> hey, y'all, I'm excited to do this show on tonight. I want to give a shout out to everybody that participated in the show last night. It was really good. Uh, even though we had us uh, a troll in there, that was it was still good. I always make... Uh, make good use of a troll I, I definitely can um trolls um can't they can they just fucking trolls and i just know how to deal with them i guess but either way i had a good time and i guess for those of my, my brother called me today and was like man how you let that dude get you off your square i was like what i said man let me tell you something i know what this is this here is the internet i don't get upset on the internet i don't Yes, that's what I said, the internet. I don't get upset on the internet. Now, I get passionate, and I'll cuss a motherfucker out. Now, I will do that, but I don't get upset and get off my square with people being on the internet. It's the internet. <laughs> so, it is what it is. We can all say what we want to say, and I'm going to deal with you until I don't want to deal with you no more, and that'll be the end of it. So, don't ever think, y'all, that I just got off my square. And also, there was some people that put in the comment section about the dude from Uruguay by, uh, like, that's around Argentina, I think. Anyway, y'all didn't know this, but the rehab is international. But anyway, it was, I know some people were saying in the, in the comment section that they could hear just fine. That's great. I couldn't hear the motherfuckers. <laughs> so <laughs> it was hard for me. So I understand that y'all could hear, but I couldn't hear and hey, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but if I can't hear, I can't hear. I'm sorry. That's just what it was. It was very difficult for me to hear that guy. So, hey, hopefully, you know, he can get him an upgraded system or something that can sound better. It is what it is. And if you don't, hey, we just will be hard to hear each other. Say we need another. We need a Tommy and Brian show again. The guru in a whore. Hey, look, let me tell you something. We this close to bringing back the guru in a whore. The only problem that we having is schedule. We have been talking about doing this for a long time. We are trying to bring it back, y'all. I promise y'all, me and Tommy have been talking on several occasions about bringing this show back. Y'all miss it. We miss it. I miss it. They miss it. Us miss it. All the pronouns is missing the show. I know. I know. I know. But just be patient with us. We trying our best to bring it back. So when you see Tommy on the channel, just remind him, hey, work out a date. We trying, it's just trying to work out a day. We can do it because we both like football. So we ain't doing the shit doing football. I'm just sorry. That shit's not happening. When it's on, on Sundays is hard. On Monday nights is hard. Y'all see me now. And the only reason why I did, I came on tonight because this is like a really good show. But shout out to my sister Sharita. What's happening? Click that like button and that subscribe. Don't just come up in here and say, hey, come up in here clicking on some shit. Share some shit. Get your friends to watch it. That's what I'm talking about. And hey to my lovely wife. Matter of fact, since I ain't with my lovely wife, let's go to my favorite part of the show. Go on here, baby. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without mm -hmm. authorization of the copyright holder. This is mm -hmm. called fair use mm -hmm. and is allowed for purposes of mm -hmm. criticism, mm -hmm. news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of oh, copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. I'm, I'm telling you, ain't nothing like some good vodka and some good, I mean, not vodka, but some good drink, yeah, and some good uh, cranberry, uh, cran apple juice. That's, that's what that is, yeah. But either way, it's just good. All right, y'all. So look, check this out. 
Oh, that's right. I got this over here. I need to change that. Um, Let's do this. Well, you know what? I ain't got to do that right now. So I can do that later and I can fix that. So we'll just do this and we'll turn that off and then we'll turn this one off. And then when I need to bring it back, I'll bring it back. All right. So let me explain something to y'all and let me, well, you know, oh, what I wanted to do too. I wanted to uh, let people know about this election shit that's going on. Let me tell y'all something. I'm going to say this because I believe it. Don't y'all be surprised. Don't be surprised if Donald Trump reverses this election shit and whips Joe Biden. Bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Don't be surprised. I'm telling y'all, I did not realize, and I was just doing a little research here and there, listening in on some facts and, and, and getting some information. I did not realize that these ballots that was cast, that they're only within a few thousand of each other. So it wasn't like... Even though they put a, a gang of votes in with the bogus ballot shit and all that, it's only a few thousand votes deciding some of these key states. And I believe if I read it correctly, I think Pennsylvania pulled back their uh, calling of the state for Joe Biden. And that's fucking huge. Yeah. Yeah. Real clear, uh, real clear politics. Yes, that's one of the the the, the fees I saw. One of the things I saw today. Real, real clear politics retracted their call of Pennsylvania. So I'm telling y'all, don't be surprised if this shit get flipped. Just saying. So I'm just saying that right now, and then we can, you know, some shit kick off. We'll address it at that point in time. But I'm just saying, don't be surprised. That's all I got to say about that. All right, y'all. So look, this is one of those instances where you have good police in a bad situation. And one of the things that I want, re one of the reasons why I saw this shit and I was like, wow, wow. And shout out to my wife for sending me this. I'm going to tell you something about my wife. You know, every now and again, well, actually about 60% of the time, if it ain't some shit I've not already seen, my about about eighty percent of the time, let me give her her credit. About eighty percent of the time, the shit she sent me be good. I tell you, I, I must admit, she sent me good shit. A lot of times, I see shit that I've already seen, or she'll send me something I've already seen, and that's fine. But she be sending me some good shit, and so shout out to my wife for sending me this because this was really good. And one of the best things about this, because y'all know how I do my breakdown. And let me tell you, breakdown, watching motherfuckers something. Look here. I'm sick and tired of you motherfuckers that's watching my channel, that's coming to see my content, telling me to stop stopping my shit so much. It's a commentary slash breakdown. I'm not here to just replay videos for you niggas. I'm not here to do that. If that's what you came to see, then your ass need to do a FOIA request or you need to go elsewhere. If you see a video on my motherfucking channel and it says breakdown or it says commentary or what are your thoughts, that mean I'm going to be pausing and playing the motherfucker, starting and stopping it like a cassette player. Like I'm Radio Raheem with my boom box. I'm starting and stopping shit when I want to start and stop shit. That's what I'm doing. Right, I'm telling you, go and look in my comment section and see how many motherfuckers it sent. Would you? I wish you would just play the video, motherfucker. This ain't the relationship replay. This is the relationship rehab, which means we tear shit down and build shit up. That's what we do here, and this is a tear down. And I'm gonna do my motherfucking thing on my motherfucking channel. So to anybody that's watching this for the first time, I'm telling you right now. This is a commentary, not a replay. All right? All right. Now, straight like that. Thank you. <laughs> straight like that. Yeah, nigga. <laughs>
<laughs> Boy, people is crazy, man. Let me tell y'all something. People are crazy. They really are. The expectations that some of these people have in the world, Craig, the world, it's so unreal and outlandish. It's like, dude, what are you really just saying to me? What are you really talking about? How is it that you want to come here and want me to do what the fuck you want me to do? <laughs> That's essentially what these people be wanting. Well, I wish you would just play the video and let it play. You're starting and stopping way too much for me. Then just click the fuck off, man. Other than that, if you don't like working for Luther's janitorial, <laughs> then you can get the fuck out. Otherwise, shut the fuck up and get back to work. <laughs> oh, man, boy, I tell you. But let's go ahead and let's talk about this. One of the main reasons why I wanted to do this video is because of the perception that people are generally getting, which I'm probably thinking that's what people are seeing and what people are thinking about this. I wanted to let people know and to educate people on the fact that this judge, because what happens essentially is this judge, these drunk, these two drunk motherfuckers. That's essentially what this is what happens when drunken suburbanites go wrong. This is a classic example. And it just so happened that shirtless Mark uh, Grisante, Judge Grisante, is a fucking judge. And he's out here drunk with his drunk ass wife. They think that they the king of the block. Because they're the only niggas on the, on the block with their house paid for. They think they can do and say whatever the fuck they want. And this is what happens when being a drunk suburbanite goes wrong. That's exactly what happens. But the, one of the biggest things that I want to point out here is that the police were in a very difficult situation. And they didn't show favoritism. It's the fucking people we elect. Your district attorney. Your prosecuting attorney. These are the motherfuckers that did not press charges. Police don't press charges. Police only arrest motherfuckers and bring motherfuckers in to get arrested. They don't press charges. They don't go forward with charges. That ain't the police job. So people trying to think, oh, the police, you see what the police did here? The police, nah, 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 nah. That ain't what the police do. All police do is see your ass break, do, break the law, commit a crime, Bring your ass to jail. Then I'm going to let the attorney figure out what the fuck they want to do. That's what the police job is. So let's go ahead and let's watch this and let's see how this shit unfold. Because this is some wild shit. It really is. And I was so shocked at the fact that they was just letting. I'm telling you right now. The only way I would have. No, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. I, I tried to give these officers, I tried to give this situation a realistic approach to say, if this was me on the job, what would I do? And I'm going to tell you, once my partner or once I got pushed, oh, everybody going to jail. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. But let's go ahead and let's watch it and then we're going to break it down. And I didn't mean to tackle you, but I mean, you kind of threw my wife down on the ground pretty hard, and I don't appreciate that. I understand that. All right? I really don't. If, that, if I would do that to your wife and you're outside, you'd do the same thing. Sure, well, if you were a police officer right? and she was screaming no, in my, my face. No, my daughter's a police officer, and I know what you guys are going through right now, and trust me, my daughter's a police officer, my son-in-law's a police officer, my brother, my, okay. my, and my, my son's a And if screaming at your daughter and approaching her like that, she would have done the same thing? No, you grabbed my wife from over there and dragged her over here, which was not necessary. Okay. So you need to chill out about that. I'm just, well, I'm I just have a camera, so... <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. Well, let me go here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Camera. Camera. It's, it's only two minutes. constructive criticism, dude. Okay. okay. You need some constructive criticism. You want to drop another copper's name? You want to scream about, you know, Molly or the mayor? Why don't you shut the f up? Sorry, and you keep quiet. Shut the f up. Put your hands back. Listen. 
Which is okay. Which is you want to be difficult? You want to you want to say you know, all these coppers? I know all these things. Oh, I you want to make us look dirty? Is that what you want to do? I so how am I helping you now? How, tell me. Tell me how can I help you? How? Shut shut up and let me talk to you, you old geezer. Shut up. Shut up and let me talk to you. Since you had so much to say and you touch a cop, so let me talk to you. God. Let me talk to you, guy. You're not done talking yet, and I'm not done talking to you. So let's be quiet, Dad, so Son can get some words in. You're saying everybody's name and dropping everybody's name to the badge, and you're expecting a special treatment. How does that look like to everybody in this environment right now? It doesn't look good. And then you grab him. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Why are you still over talking? We're going back over to my car. No, no, I'm just saying, it's all right. We're going over here. They're saying that you pushed an officer. You didn't. You wouldn't do that, would you? You know what? When he when he was when he dragged well, he dragged Maria. When the two girls were on Maria, he was dragging Maria across the street and actually was taking her down <laughs> on my front lawn. And I basically said, "Listen, just like talk to her." And I pushed him. And I said, "Don't friggin' tackle her." And I pushed him. <laughs> All right. So look, let me tell you something. First and foremost. I am, I'm the nicest, coolest cop there is until shit goes left or somebody's life is in danger. When shit is in jeopardy, somebody about to either can get hurt or somebody can get seriously fucked up or somebody can die, then that's when I become the motherfucker that's in charge. Other than that, I'm trying to hear from everyone. I want to commune with everybody we can all have a kumbaya moment where we can all talk and have a good co civil conversation. But once you fuck up and you cross that line, oh, Action Jackson is coming the fuck. I'm sorry. Action Redman is coming the fuck out. And when you fuck up, you're going to jail. Now it's just a matter of how you're going. <laughs> you going quietly or you going getting fucked up. That's it. You're going to jail. The minute this dude, I don't give a fuck if he was the mayor. Unless this motherfucker was the fucking, unless this dude had a secret service detail, that's the only way I would have let a motherfucker push me because the secret service can shoot the shit out your ass and walk the fuck off and ain't nothing anybody can do about it. You cannot even detain a secret service. <laughs> so that's something that you should know. You talk shit to the president, you talk shit to anybody with a Secret Service detail, you can get shot the fuck up and won't shit get done about it because they, they cannot be detained. You cannot stop a Secret Service man for no reason whatsoever. If they walk into a barbershop and shoot four motherfuckers and walk out, you cannot stop them. They, got, they truly have like that uh, fat white dude in Lethal Weapon 2 they have diplomatic immunity. These motherfuckers can do whatever the fuck they want to do. Yes. Look it up. Check it out. You will never see a secret serviceman being detained. You won't see it. Secret service, do what the fuck they want to do, when the fuck they want to do it, how the fuck they want to do it. Make sure you know that. Don't be thinking because... Uh, 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 Trump or Biden or somebody is out there and the cameras is out that you can't get fucked up. <laughs> you can. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. You get fucked up and ain't gonna be no citizens arrest. Ain't gonna be no law enforcement arrest. Ain't gonna be no military arrest. Them motherfuckers are truly untouchable. <laughs> so, just throwing that side note out there. But, once you put your hands on a police officer, Ain't no sorry, ain't no my bad, ain't no, oh wait, let me show you something, let me tell you something, ain't no more, I'm not that type of guy, your ass is going to jail, fuck that, fuck that, and the reason why I say that is because there has to be a standard, and there has to be a, long, a line that's drawn in the sand that you just don't cross. And one of those lines that you don't cross is you don't shoot or kill a police officer and you don't fucking touch a police officer. You just don't. I'm telling you, you don't. I, I don't know if I told y'all the story about 
when we were working at a um what the fuck is that shit called in Michigan? Uh damn it. It's a country music festival that they have every year in uh in uh West Michigan. I forgot what they call it. It's uh like the B96 Summer Jam or some shit like that. But it's a country and western station and they have this free concert like every year. Bunch of white folks come out there and they have a gay old time. They drinking beer, they getting overheated in the sun, and they just out there party. Get it. With that being said, they're during the concert, when especially when certain acts come up, because they have like big acts. They have like Florida Georgia Line. They have some of the biggest names in country and western that come out to do country music that come out here. It's not the country jamboree. I forgot what it's called. It's it's like B93 or some shit like that. The 93 Summer Jam or some shit. I forgot what they call it. But either way, when they have this thing, you have people that's drinking. You have people that's having a good time going a little too far. And there was a time when we was holding a line and uh, people were coming up too close. And we were telling them to back up, tell them to back up. Now it's about shit maybe 25 of us in the line, 25 uh, deputies, deputy reserves in the line, holding this line, about 25 of us straight across. This drunk white boy <laughs> decides that he ain't going to back up because he he out here, he's partying, he's having a good time, and we, he just wants us to leave him the fuck alone. So we are essentially saying like, hey, are we going to lock this motherfucker up? What's the next move? Everybody looking to see what's going to happen. So Sarge step in. Shout out to my man, Corey Hunt. Sarge steps up. And uh, Sarge is trying to be diplomatic. He's trying to talk to this dude. And Sarge is like, hey, look. He's like, hey, man, I know you're having a good time, but we need this area. He's like, all I need you to do is just give me like another four feet back. Because we got to keep a 10-foot uh, 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 lane open for fire hazard reasons and all that kind of stuff between the stage and y'all. It got to be 10 feet. That's all he was asking for. So this guy is like, he's like, well, I'm just saying I, I, I'm, I'm out here. I'm just trying to party. And then he got up in Sarge's face and like chest bumped him like this because he was a little bit taller than Sarge. So he was able to get like close like that to him to where he was able to like bump him. And I'm telling you, all at once, as soon as that dude bump, bumped up Sarge, the whole line, I mean, we all jumped. I'm talking, we was, a, it, it happened so fast that we, we all knew, are oh, we about to Hulk smash this motherfucker? And Sarge literally, like, once he, he didn't even look back, but one, I mean, this was some straight up cold-blooded Malcolm X type of shit. When the dude bumped him, Sarge knew we was coming and he held us like this. He was like, just hold up. <laughs> and I'm like one of like the, I'm one of like maybe five uh, uh, deputies that's like right there where Sarge is. So as soon as he bumped him, I'm, I'm coming. I'm out gloves. I got my Kevlar gloves on. I'm coming, nigga. Let's get it. I'm about to dive on this white boy and show him every trick I know. <laughs> I'm about to get it in. I'm talking. This is the hand-to-hand -hand combat I've been waiting on. I'm about to show everybody what I've been taught and what I've learned. But Sarge, like, held us all up. And he then told this dude, he put, he put this on him, like, in his chest. He said, look, man. He said, I'm trying to save you because if I don't, these guys are going to fucking kill you. And it was like, we were all sitting there like the fucking hyenas in, uh, <laughs> in the Lion King. We like, ah, yeah, yeah. like, let's just dive on this motherfucker. <laughs> ah, ah. Boy, I'm telling you, it was, it, it, it happened so fast. That dude, he literally got saved. It was by the grace of Sergeant Hunt <laughs> and the grace of God that kept him from getting his ass whooped. Cause you don't touch the police, you just don't. And then you gonna touch our sergeant in front of us, nigga. You getting your ass whooped. That was it. Was just it. That was done. People go to jail all the time at B ninety. I think it's called B ninety three. I think that's what it's called. People go to jail all the time 
at that shit. I mean, they be drunk, pass out drunk, don't know how to act. They doing shit, breaking bottles and shit. All right, come on. We take you on in. So that happens. But it's just one of those things that you just don't do. Police know it across the board. And the fact that he did it, being a judge, in my opinion, was even more disrespectful. Because if that judge was in his fucking courtroom, he know good and goddamn well that not a single deputy would let anybody come up to that bench or even put a finger on him. And the fact that he felt that he could have did that shit, that's why his ass should have went to jail. Total disrespect for the for law enforcement, total disrespect to the justice system, motherfucker. And this is what happens with some judges. Because a lot of judges, the, for the most part, you I, the judges that I know have been pretty much cool. But it's been a good chunk of them. I'd say out of 100 of them, maybe 20 of them are total fucking assholes. And they're assholes because they understand and they realize that they have a power and they abuse the shit. So they think you can't tell them no. And especially with, with me dealing with judges... Uh, from an IT perspective and letting motherfuckers know what the fuck time it was when I was in Michigan, it's like I had to tell judges no all the time and they don't want to hear that shit. So it's like when you're dealing with judges like that, especially uh, especially a judge that think he hot shit and they being an asshole, they think they can do whatever the fuck they want. And to a degree, they do have a lot of power. But birthday, yeah, birthday bash, that's what it's called. Thank you, baby. V93 birthday bash. That's what it's called. But it's like when they have, when you have a judge that has that type of power and they know it and they abuse it, that's what the fuck happens. And you have a judge like this that think he the king of his fucking block. He think this whole block is his fucking courtroom. And it's not. You don't run shit on your block, dude. You don't. And the fact that he thought he could and the fact that he was acting and treating motherfuckers like this, watch how he, how he's him and his wife. Because his wife, that bitch thinks she a judge too, some kind of way. Because she just ran all the way the fuck off at the mouth. And I'm going to show you that part to how the fuck she acted and just the total disregard for her, you know, being a, a, a not even understanding, not only am I, you know, my husband a judge, but I'm his wife and I'm about to do some fuck shit that's going to get his ass arrested. She didn't even consider none of that because she thinks she can do whatever the fuck she wants. Like a lot of women, and especially with they men, they get men in fucking trouble, and they get men killed all the time. You hear Tommy talk about the shit all the fucking time, where a bitch will run off at the mouth, talk shit to a motherfucker, kick shit off with a motherfucker, and then it wind up being the dude who winds up getting his ass whooped, going to jail, or worst case scenario, getting killed, trying to motherfucking stand up for his bitch. When she should have kept her fucking mouth shut and let the motherfucking police do their fucking job. And she know better. She know better. Jihad, I ain't for that shit tonight. Don't get on that. Black citizens feel the same about police. I ain't trying to hear this shit tonight because, nigga, you don't have no facts. You're just talking your feelings. And this is not a feeling show. This is a fact show. All right, so let's check this shit out. <clears throat> Let's go. Yeah, because that was the third one. This is the one I want to show. Yep. Yep. Here we go. So check this shit out. Let's just see how this shit went down. Well, this jaw dropping video has a Buffalo judge facing a lot of criticism tonight, showing him shoving a police officer during a dispute with his neighbors and threatening officers with his connections to the mayor and police officials. Mm -hmm. And that judge was never charged with anything. Good evening, I'm Mary Alice Demler. And hello everyone, I'm Scott Levin. That police body camera video first surfaced on a law blog earlier today, and we have spent the afternoon trying to get more information on exactly what happened in it. Here's two on your sides, Claudine Ewing. An ongoing neighborhood feud got nasty in June. It that involved state key. Supreme Court Judge Mark Grisanti and his wife. Take a look at the police body camera video we What's obtained under the Freedom of Information Law. That's the judge staff. without a shirt. We have time. muted much of the sound because of the foul language. Now, Freedom of Information Act, that's called a FOIA, guys. That's what I said before about how you can get any type of police You don't stop yelling. This is going to be a... You can get any type of police footage that you want. 
because by doing a FOIA request. So it's just some shit you should know. Your cousin get locked up by the police. Your cousin get arrested. Your cousin get shot or get tased. If there is police footage by law, federal fucking statute, they have to release the video footage to you. It is called a FOIA request. You go and fill out the FOIA request and they have to give you that information. They have to give you a copy of that footage. Now, it ain't no time, excuse me, damn. It ain't no time limit on that footage. So they ain't gotta give it to your ass in 24 to 48 hours and no shit like that. So don't go running your mouth thinking that's what's gonna happen. But they do have to produce it. I personally, I think that there should be with a, a 48 hour hold and that's it. Because sometimes there's shit on a video like that that you don't want to let out and that they have to edit out because of shit like, you know, like names and things like that. Because once you get that footage, you can do whatever the fuck you want with it. So if it's something where there's a kid involved or something like that, there are certain things that have to be edited out of that video just for that privacy piece and protecting, you know, a kid or some shit like that or a victim. You have to have that. But I believe that there should be a 48 no more than 72 hours because that gives you enough time to go ahead and get the footage, edit the, the sensitive data shit that you need to edit out of it, and then get it to the citizen. That's just how I feel. That's just one of the things that, that I think as far as just when we talk about law enforcement improvement or reform, that's definitely one of the things that should be addressed in that. But let's keep going. Language. But there is a lot of back and forth between the officers and the Grisantes who were shouting at neighbors and vice versa. An officer tells the judge's wife to stop yelling. Stop yelling. This is going to be a problem for you. I don't care. Okay. Eventually, a Buffalo police officer has Mrs. Grisanti on the ground mm -hmm. and he handcuffs her. The judge, obviously not pleased, starts shouting. I'm not doing this right now. He then shoves a police officer and another now, officer. Now, one of the things the that I noticed there, that police officer was on straight bullshit. He was too fucking slow. The minute your partner back was turned and you see that dude walking up to him, you should have dove on his ass. Hey, man, I don't know what the fuck you think you about to do, but you're not doing that. Back off my partner. Plain and simple. Judge, your honor, mayor, or doctor attorney, I don't give a fuck who you are. You don't let nobody walk up on your partner. Plain and simple. And I know that that motherfucker know who that judge, who, who he was. I don't give a fuck. When you talking about law enforcement and police officers being out there, it's y'all against everybody. Fuck that shit. A judge, another a fireman, paramedic, I don't give a fuck. Don't nobody walk up on your partner. That's it. It don't happen. Judge to keep his hands off of a cop. The Grisantes were detained, but never arrested. The district attorney investigated. No one was charged. And boom, there it is. So here's the thing. There was a report made because there's a, this is a stop. And so there's, there's got to be a report made. There was a call into 911. So that means a report has been made. They actually came and arrived on this call. They saw what was happening. It was a domestic, essentially. You got these neighbors that's been feuding for years and the shit went too far. And now it's like, okay, this motherfucker is, is going to be detained or whatever the fuck. And they probably asked what the fuck y'all want to do. And even if they didn't, if they decide to let the motherfucker go today, you know a judge ain't going no goddamn well. But why wouldn't the prosecuting attorney at least reprimand the judge in some shape, form, or fashion. Because I'm going to show you later on, they clearly committed several of crime. Several of crime. And this is the type of shit to where this ain't, uh, 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 in my opinion, this is not, oh, that's a white, that's a white for white privilege type of thing. White, that white supremacy is looking out for each other. This ain't that. This is a judicial system looking out for each other type of thing. And that's, in my opinion, corruption. Now, the fact that you have situations to where you have discretion, I'm cool with that. But when you break the fucking law, you put your hands on a fucking officer and you put your hands on another citizen. Nah, fuck that judge. I'm sorry. You gonna have your dead court pimp. 
Just saying. Because if that shit was any other way with any other citizen, it would be the same exact thing. So I don't understand how these motherfuckers just... Well, I understand why the fuck they just thought it was okay they can make it go away because that's their boy. We all, we all, we all partners. That's bullshit. When a motherfucker get hurt and a motherfucker goes too far, fuck that. Now you got to pay like judges to tell motherfuckers all the time when they locking niggas up, you need to be held responsible for your, for your actions. This is the only way you're going to learn is for us to do this. So fuck that. This is the only way the judge going to learn motherfucking reprimand his motherfucking ass. Plain and simple. I don't give a fuck if you give him some community service. If you give his ass two weeks in jail, do something. One reason is the officer did not want to press charges. When we asked the Buffalo police why, because if the average person shoved or pushed a police officer, they would likely be arrested. Mm -hmm. The department says it was a discretionary call made by the officer. He wasn't punched or tackled. We reached out to the judge for a comment, but he is not allowed to speak on the matter. However, his lawyer did speak with me. Does he recognize he probably should not have put his hands on a police officer? Oh, absolutely. In, in hindsight, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't, you know. He not hindsight, in hindsight from being drunk out there with your motherfucking ignorant ass wife. She fucked you over. Ma'am, be quiet. I don't care. All right, let's go to jail, bitch. Then the minute I slapped them bracelets on your ass, now your husband, Captain Save a Ho, ain't gonna be Superman. Ain't gonna come hit me with the yo! Bing, bing, bing. So the boy tell me. <laughs> That's what the fuck happened. He gonna try to hit him with the soldier boy, and now his ass is in fucking hot water. And you see, they ain't saying shit about that bitch, are they? Nope. She at home. Playing motherfucking tiddlywinks, watching motherfucking uh, the soap operas, eating fucking bonbons. Like she peg fucking Bundy or some shit. Meanwhile, this dude is fighting for his, about to be fighting for his motherfucking career. He sees his wife being, you know, taken Look at down that shit. to the ground. In Buffalo, Claudine Ewing, Channel 2 News. That's a old ass name, ain't it? Claudine. <laughs> Woo hoo! That's old school there, boy. You. You just thinking some old lady with a church hat on giving that shit, that, that damn commentary. Claudine, like, ooh, yeah, that's old Claudine. That boy, she going down to Suge Juke Joint tonight. She going to be singing live in person. God damn, that's an old ass name. All right, so now let's get to the real good part, and I want to actually play the young video. Thank you, uh, Miss June. Click that like button, click that subscribe button, and hey, click that cash app. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. All right, let's go ahead and let me turn this on because this is like where you get the raw and uncut. And you're going to see him actually tell her and give her a warning because he done told her to shut the fuck up a couple of times. But she think that it's sweet because she's the judge's wife. That's exactly what the fuck this is. Problem for you. I don't care. Okay, cool. Then get over here. You're not gonna rescue me. I sure am. My son, no. My son. We are not doing this right now. 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 See that shit? No, 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 no. Dude, keep your hands off. You better go out my wife. And that's my thing. I'm talking, you put your hands on my partner. You walking up on my partner. I'm going to be aggressive. You put your hands on my partner, I'm coming fast and deliberate. That dude would have hit the ground. Judge Joe Brown, Judge Mathis, <laughs> Judge Judy, Judge Million, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Judge or no judge, your ass is hitting the ground. I'm coming, like, it would have been like I was coming off the three-point stand off the line of scrimmage. Hut, hut. Have back option on two, on two. And I'm hitting you. Wham! There it is. Oh, you'd have heard that. Oh! <laughs> you know, you motherfucker hit a motherfucker hard, and that body hit him, and then the body hit the ground, you get that. Oh! Yeah. Fuck wrong with you putting your hands on the police. You lost your mind, sir. I don't give a fuck if you drunk or not. You fucked up. Now, Turn your punk ass over and put these bracelets on. Hit them with the ice cube. 
Turn your punk ass over. <laughs> Dude. She's going to cuffs. She's going to cuffs. Right, left my third. I hit him with that. Hey. I know. I know. And you I'm calling right now. Dude. Would not want them put, putting your hand. Somebody putting their hand. You are not going to fight a cop. Why don't you shut the f*** up? Listen. Shut your f***ing mouth. Push your hands right in the back. Listen. Push your hands right in Okay. Back. Yeah. You want to be difficult? You want to you wanna say coppers? I know all these things. No, I don't want to make us look dirty. Is that what you want to do? I so how am I helping you now? How, how, how am I helping you now? <laughs> Shut, shut up and let me talk to you, you old geezer. Oh, really a wild scene taking place here, but I've got to explain exactly who these people are and what's going on. You've got a neighborhood few neighbors that kind of don't get along during this big argument. Right. So it's like the and this is where they go actually show the full portion of this because I couldn't find this by itself. But that police officer, he wasn't like he was more pissed off. And not it being not the judge as far as what the judge was doing, because he knows this shit is being recorded. This judge is wilding the fuck out, trying to throw his fucking weight around. And if he had any type of sense, and that's how I know that that judge had been drinking, he was fucking up and running off at the mouth the wrong way. There is a way that you can talk to the police to let them know who you are and who the and how the fuck you want shit to go. And if you don't, if you don't know how to do that, you are gonna wind up in a situation like this. I mean, police end up showing up and respond. Man, I didn't even think to look there. And then at there, some uh, point, police bear. go to one of the women who is seemingly screaming out of control. As she's being cuffed, her husband comes over and shoves a police officer. That shirtless man is a judge. Is a, a judge. judge in New York State. Is a judge. <laughs> The big controversy now is number one, how police responded to someone who has just shoved another police officer. What's going on there? Number two, he hasn't been charged with anything. This happened back in June. This happened back in June, and the judge who shoves a police officer on camera charged with nothing. Now, I'm going to play a lot more of this video for you because there are times where the judge is talking about capable, right. way everything here. And prosecutors here. Here we go. Okay. All right. Tag me. Rip my friggin', rip my friggin' chain of off. Fucking assholes. So you see this bitch already? You see her already? Now this bitch is the a judge's wife in the middle of the street on the block. Now guess what these motherfuckers is arguing over? Just guess. Just, just guess. I got a. A eight foot man, eight feet tall, four foot shoulders, and that ain't all. He's a king size papa. <laughs> He's like, just guess, just guess. They arguing over parking spots on the fucking block. Yeah, you got it all on camera. All right. Look at him. Look at that drunk bitch. You see, this is. This is is what the problem is when you let your wife drink and go the fuck outside. If you're going to let your wife go through a bottle, or uh, I'm sorry, a carton or a container of box wine, keep that white bitch in the house. Because <laughs> if you don't, you and her going to wind up in the backseat of a fucking police car. <laughs> This is what happens when you let a white bitch drink some friends of wine to her heart's fucking content. You wind up with some shit like this. This bitch is out here kicking shit off, doing all this fucking jaw jacking, and what happens at the end? The man winds up in the back of the fucking police car. So, word to the wise, white men, white women, drink your box wine in the fucking house and stay your punk ass in the fucking house because when you come outside motherfuckers go to jail no matter if you in the the heart of the ghetto or in law in white suburbia the only difference in the ghetto is it ain't gonna be no reunity wine it ain't gonna be no uh uh, uh box friends of wine in the hood it's gonna be some of that thought juice them little <laughs> It's going to be them little Mickey thought juices that them bitches drink. 
Or oh, them Budweiser Riga, them Bud, what they call like the Margarita Budweiser thing. I think it's Budweiser that make them, but it's so little. Them little margarita things in a can. That's stock juice. When you let bitches drink that type of shit and come outside, mm -mm. keep them inside. Don't let them go outside no way. You want to let them out to go pee or something, let them out in the backyard. Let them go pee like a dog or something and keep their ass in the house. When you got these ghetto bitches on that thought juice and you got these white women on that cheap box wine, this is what happens. <laughs> This is what the fuck happens. Shit goes left. Thank God that nobody get shot. Then nobody get stabbed. They're drunk. See, and let me tell you white people something else. This is why you need niggas on the block. This is why you want to have niggas on the block, because niggas don't do this. If that was me on the block, once they would have came over onto my side of the block, they would have got the wish creed. Bitch, I wish you would walk up in my wife's face. <laughs> Motherfucking judge, I don't give a fuck if you a judge. Walk your ass up over here, and you're going to get fucked up. That's what's going to happen. Well, let's go. Come on, bro. Let's go. You want to go? You want to go? I'm not fighting you, motherfucker. I'm 46. I'm going to shoot the shit out your ass, and you ain't going to go back home. How about that? Now, call your police brother-in-law. Call your police daughter. Call your police whoever the fuck. Walk your ass over here, and you're going to wish <laughs> that your ass never got the fuck out the house today because I'm going to fuck you up. That's what you need. Because that's the shit that make a motherfucker say, okay, fine. Fuck it. I'm going home. Honey, come on. Let's go back. Ha come on, honey. Come back. <laughs> you see, he ain't gonna walk over there. Either. Honey, come back. Don't go over there. Oh, okay. Now, if he fucks you up, I'm not coming to help. I'm not. I'm not coming the fuck over there to help. Jamar Quavius has told me already what the fuck he was going to do to me. I'm not getting fucked up for you. He already warned me. I'm not fucking coming over there. So you take your ass over there if you want. And if he Latrell Sprewells and chokes the shit out of your ass like he did Judge George Carl, it's on you. <laughs> That's what the fuck would have happened. I'm telling you. Right, the Wish You Would Foundation, goddammit. Fuck the Make-A-Wish Foundation left third. The Wish You Would Foundation. I wish a motherfucker would. I'm telling you. Coming over to my motherfucking side of the block. Loud talking? Mm -mm. Nobody talks Little Seymour. <laughs> nobody. And I mean nobody. <laughs> loud talks Little Seymour. I'm telling you. Y'all motherfuckers don't know what that's from. I'm going to be surprised somebody know what that's from. But that's just it. Oh, that was PJ Carlissimo. Thank you. It's George Carl, PJ Carlissimo. Carlissimo, same type of white guy. Uh, motherfucker, that's what happened. That's it. I'm telling you. This shit would not happen. It would have been some slow singing and flower bringing. I'm not fucking around with you on this. Sir, ma'am, judge, judge's bitch. <laughs> Take your ass back across the street. Talk your shit from over there. Come over here, you're going to get fucked up. Hey, I'm going to step back. I called because these guys parked their cars on everybody's truck. All four cars. City vehicles on their driveway, their driveway, my driveway. Can they fuck in on their driveway? Oh, my God. You want to call the cops? You're no good. You're not going to fuck in. So, I'm, I'm not listening to a bunch of yelling. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk calmly yeah. over here. Yeah. He started it. Okay. He started with the truck. That's fine. Wait, so, can I just ask you this? Is that blocking his driveway? Uh, no. The truck right there? Okay, I didn't think so. Okay, Thank so they, because so, they, because so, that's why so they came right here. So you hear the arrogance of the judge? How the fuck do you think you can keep somebody from parking in front of your house? On the street, not in your driveway. Not blocking your driveway. As you can clearly see the truck wasn't parking, blocking the driveway. 
I was a cop. I was a uh, uh, a sheriff's deputy in in Michigan. Uh, Marcus speaks. But I'm just telling you that shit. You don't get to control who the fuck parks and where they park on the block. You just don't. Would you like to or prefer to have the front of your house to where your car is in front of? Yeah, but when motherfuckers got plenty of cars, ain't nothing you can do. It is what it is. They let the porch and, and they stop and says that uh, my, our fucking truck is in their driveway. This and that says our fucking truck is in their driveway. They came across the street here, pushed my husband. Came, she came she came running. She, came running. she literally. Hit. So what? What was the first no, thing that they said? Hey, hey. Wait a minute. Ma'am, if you don't stop yelling, <laughs> you hear that loud white bitch. I'm telling you, you have, man, let me tell you something. Men, let me tell you something. And, and you know what, Amanda? They got a long ass driveway and I believe that they was parking on the street to fuck with them because they said this was a long going feud. They've been feuding for years. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you men something. Men. Any woman that you dealing with, I don't give a fuck if y'all been together for two days or y'all been together for 20 years. If you do not have enough respect from your woman to where you can't tell her to stop or to hold on or to be quiet and worst case scenario to shut the fuck up. If you got to take it there and she won't listen to none of that. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Because with all of this shit going on, a simple, honey, stop. Honey, let me handle this. Honey, I got this. Babe, shut up. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Shut your, or, or the classic white person, white, white, uh, the classic white phrase, shut your fucking pie hole. <laughs> That's the classic one right there. Shut your fucking pie hole. If you got a woman that won't adhere to any of that, then you have a problem and you need to leave her alone. Am I lying? <laughs> Motherfucker, no. You say, look, honey, hang on. She can still be talking. Honey, be quiet. Honey, stop it. Just stop. <laughs> Shut up. Would you shut your fucking pie hole? <laughs> and if she don't stop right there, that's it. Better be done. <laughs> you better be done with her. Because she going to wind up getting your freedom fucked with or getting your life fucked with. What do I always say about when you having an interaction with the police? What's at stake? Your freedom and your life. And if you got a woman that won't adhere to none of that, you better leave her white ass alone now if you a black person you got you a black woman you better be like look babe chill <laughs> babe hold on babe stop baby chill the fuck out bitch shut the fuck up <laughs> if that don't hit if that don't register and she don't stop then and she still got even if she says, no, fuck that. Now I'm just saying no. What the fuck I'm trying to tell a motherfucker is, look, look. If she's still doing that shit, you better leave her the fuck alone. Because she's going to get you fucked up. I'm telling you. She's going to wind up either getting your ass whooped somewhere. She's going to wind up getting your ass locked up somewhere. Or worst case scenario, she's going to wind up getting your ass killed. If she black and she can't take none of them commands, and that's what the fuck they need to be. Commands. Bay, hold on. Bay, I got it. Bay, chill. Bay, stop. Bay, be quiet. Just stop. Bay, shut the fuck up. Bitch, shut the fuck up. She don't hear none of that. That's it. Leave her alone. If you can't go to the extreme with either shut your fucking pie hole or bitch, shut the fuck up, better leave her alone. I'm telling you right now, because that means she has, you have literally, no, she has no respect for you and no confidence in you as a man. And therefore she will get you fucked up or in a fucked up situation. And the minute she get hit in the mouth, 
that's when she gonna straighten up. So unless you willing to pop a bitch in the mouth at any given point in time in front of the police or in front of some thug ass niggas or whoever, that's the only way. That's the only way. I'm just telling you. This is going to be a problem for you. I don't care. Okay. See that? <laughs> and you see the whole time the judge been listening to this bitch run off at the mouth. And she and he sees her running off at the mouth to the police and says nothing. That lets you know that this bitch don't know when to stop. He can't tell her, baby, stop. Honey, cool, honey, cool out. Honey, I got it. Nope. Cool. Then get over here. I like that. He's like, cool. I sure fucking am. I sure I fucking am. am. <laughs> See? Hey, and look. That lets you know as a police officer, he's had enough. I sure fucking am. I'm going to lock you the fuck up. We are not doing this right now. We are not doing this right now. No. Take you're going in the back of the car. No. We can deal with this. No, no. you have no idea the shit that okay. you put up with. Okay, put your hands behind your back. We are gonna have a problem. Put your hands behind your back. Hey, no. this my fucking wife. You're gonna be sorry. I don't care. My I don't. fucking wife. You're gonna be sorry. I don't care. I don't okay. care. I don't get care. Take a seat. I don't I'm care. I'm done listening to you scream. Why? Because it's the truth. It's fucking. No, because I want to hear everybody talk. Fifteen years of bullshit. I bullshit. You're cheering them first. You don't understand. Listen. Ask any neighbor. You know, that doesn't mean hey, I'm not gonna listen to you. Now that right there, you know how you talk about George Floyd have that. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not that type of guy. White folks shit is. You don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. I tried to tell you. <laughs> That's their shit. <laughs> they had that wait, wait, wait. You don't understand. You don't understand. I'm trying to tell you, but you won't listen. <laughs> you don't understand. Ah. <laughs> Y'all know I ain't fucking lying. I'm telling the truth like a motherfucker when. When shit goes down, when you done hit a motherfucker in the mouth or done slapped them braces, bracelets on a motherfucker, or they done got tased, now they want to be civil and explain it to you. And that's what they're saying. You don't understand. Wait. Wait, I'm trying to tell you. You don't understand. This bullshit's been going on for 15 years. That fucking cunt across the street has been fucking with us for 15 years. You don't understand. <laughs> Ma'am, put your hands behind your back. Wait, wait, let me explain. <laughs> that's what happens. I'm telling you, that's what it is. <laughs> oh. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear what you have to say. You're too tight. But you're screaming it. Loosen these. Loosen these. I want to hear it. Now, one of the things, one of the things that's good to do as a police officer, let me tell you something. When you put a motherfucker that ain't used to going to jail in the backseat of a car, slam the door. Because slamming that door, it's 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 a it's a wake up call for him. It's like, oh shit. You know how when people say, man, ain't nothing like your ass going to jail. And when they put you in that cell for that first time and that door make that clank sound, how how just much of a reality check that is. When you put them in that back seat, slam that door because they're going to be like, oh, shit, I'm really under arrest. <laughs> right. They also say, give me a second. Wait, wait, would you give me a second? Will you let me explain? No, you going to jail. Oh, man. Okay, one more time from the top. Okay, so what happened is that these are our cars, but, yeah. but, but, but these neighbors, this is, these neighbors can seem to have a problem when we park on the street. I don't, I don't know what the problem is. We're not in their driveway. So I came out of the porch sit, which I do every and, day. And I'm sorry, but where the fuck did this dude get this tank top from? <laughs> what? 19... 50s fucking shower room 
was this goddamn tank top left in to where he picked it up and has kept it for the past 65, 70 years? Why does he have a fucking tank top that looks like this? And why the fuck does he even have it on and is wearing it like it's cool? I mean, goddamn, I know you are old motherfucker and I understand you got your George Jefferson shit happening with your hairline and shit, but God damn it, man. Go with fucking solid colors. Fat people across the globe know you don't wear stripes that go this way. You just don't. You wear stripes that go this way. They're slimming. You wear black, it's slimming. You wear a solid color. You wear a darker color. You don't wear a fucking faded ass gray, blue, red, and white. What the fuck is this, the 4th of July? This motherfucker's got to be a patriot wearing that goddamn tank top. It's all kind of barbecue sauce and shit like that on this motherfucker too. Women, stop letting your men come outside like this. Kids, stop letting your parents come outside like this. It's a goddamn shame. <laughs> Left first said, that's the Richard Simmons clothing line. I'm a pony. I'm a pony. Five more. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> he do that, that Richard Simmons. So that is a Richard Simmons classic. If you look at the tag inside it, that motherfucker going to say, designed by Richard Simmons. <laughs> and it's going to have a picture of his afro. <laughs> that that tank top came with some ball divider shorts on. <laughs> I say it was a set in Walmart. It was the tank top, and on the other side of the hanger, you had these short, short, ball dividing shorts on. Y'all know what ball dividers are? It's them old school shorts that, that stop at the thigh, right where your balls were, where the seam of the shorts which divide your balls. <laughs> Put one testicle on this side and one on that side. That's how short the motherfuckers are. <laughs> right, them old ass NBA, them, for all you Detroit motherfuckers, them shorts Isaiah Thomas used to wear, those are ball dividers. Those shorts Bill Lambeer used to wear, those are ball dividers. <laughs> Hey, if my man Michelle Cobra in the building, he know what I'm talking about. Zeke and Lambeer wore ball dividers. They did. Rodman wore ball dividers too when he was in Detroit. But when he came to Chicago, Mike was like, hey man, fuck all that shit. You ain't wearing no ball dividers out here. <laughs> we in Chicago, Jack. We wearing some long shorts. <laughs> Oh my God! Let's continue to hear the story. You turned around and started, and Mark, and Mark started to say, "You're fucking. Do I have a problem? Your fucking trucks in my fucking driveway." Says the truck is not in your driveway. Okay. And she says, "You're fat." Dude, I wanna, I wanna live in this type of white suburbia. I wish a motherfucker would come and ring my doorbell, come on my perch, and tell me that, "Hey, your fucking car is on my fucking side, or it's blocking my driveway." <laughs> I'm like, I'd, I'd have been so shocked, like, oh, I finally get to be a nigga. Let me zip my nigga suit up. <laughs> I would zip and put the hood on. Bitch, who the fuck you think you is coming over here, bitch? <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would be so excited that I get to cuss a motherfucker out that I would just go, I'm going overboard. I'm going too far. I'll tell you that right now. I am. Fuck, you're miserable. You're nothing but a fat fuck, which she's called me that several many times. <laughs> and then you're, you're miserable. You're nothing but a fat fuck. I wish a bitch would come over there. You're nothing but a fat fuck. <laughs> you're blocking my driveway. I'm like, bitch, you better get my son's a police officer, my daughter's a police, and my husband's a judge. I'd be like, I'll fuck all three of them up. Call them up. Call him. <laughs> you better call Tyrone. Call him. 
Cause I'm gonna go off and hit you in your shit. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> you need to call them niggas on the phone. Call them. <laughs> Cause I'ma go upside your dome. <laughs> now every time I pull my car up on your grass, you say no, but turn right around and ask me, can I please give you some gas? <laughs> Now, I ain't come here for no cheap thrill. You better get the fuck up off my porch or I'm gonna start to kill. Now, all you white motherfuckers don't know me. You don't know what the fuck I do to you and you and you and you. And yes, bitch, you back there too. <laughs> Call him. Go get him. And the husband came out and was like, what's going oh, on? Stop. Man. They came, and started coming they at me. They, they, shot at they me. came this way. They came right well, actually, over. Actually, they should have came at you for that goddamn tank top you got on. Now, that's, I'm, if I'm the police, I'm sanctioning that. <laughs> I'm like, so you went and slapped him because of the tank top you had on? Yes, I did. Well, I understand that. So we'll let that go. Uh, tell me what else happened after that. <laughs> That's just me. I'm just saying. And okay. And then, and then Maria. And then Maria pushed and hit her in the face. Hit she bit my face. arm here. Yeah, she, she did. Arm. Okay, she so did. that was. Yeah, hey, Kevin Costello said not funny, <laughs> but I tell you what, your last name is motherfucker. What the fuck? Hey, uh, Abbott. What the fuck kind of last name is that, Costello? So thank you, sir. <laughs> Kevin Costello. Your name is a joke, sir. I won't take you seriously. Hey, uh, this guy said that uh he's he's found out not to cure the cancer. What's his name? Kevin Costello. Oh, he's a fucking lie. What else is going on? And so yeah. I came up and I says, Don't touch my husband, get off of my husband. And so then she hit me, I defended myself, and she, and, she, and I and I was in a bad accident. So my sister knows that I have a bad back and, okay. and two knee braces. Just All right, bitch. We don't care about your bad back and your knee braces. But there's the assault on her. So there you go, right there. That's already one. So her ass is gone. She should be going to jail. Call me wobbly wobbly, you fucking okay. fat fuck this that. He well, said Mark, you no fat fat fuck. Then, okay, then, well he might have to go to them. And then no and and they're, they're, so is she right here. And they got their nose and everything. Yes. Just, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well I wanna talk to you. Don't you love how white folks are witnesses? They like, I saw it too, and they did do that. They were bothering them. They were doing nothing. I was just walking my dog, and they came, and they started bothering them. I saw it. You got to love white folks. They will tell some shit when they see some shit. I love it. You as well, so give me a minute. So. They're, they're, they're friends. So, okay. so they always team up on us. So. Um, obviously you can see that they're, they're drunk. Come at me again, and my sister says, "Don't get, don't, don't get, don't touch my sister. Don't, don't get, touch don't get, my sister." So don't, don't, don't get. I, I know jujitsu, so I'm trying to restrain her. She's trying to restrain her in a jitsu way. Trying to try just restrain her. I wasn't punching her. I was, I was just trying to. And there's her. evidence because they came over. Yeah, there's stuff. There's stuff. And there's, there's cigar. Yeah. There's stuff in the cigar. Okay. So, and so then, oh, so then, so then, it got in the middle of the street. So, so let me ask you this because I'm going to talk to them. I, I, like I said, I want everybody to have the story. I just. I want it said to me. Mm -hmm. So, as far as this goes, I kind of have a guess as to what they're going to tell me. They're going to, yeah. But, they're, but they're, so here's, here's what I'm going to ask. Just one minute. Sure. Right away, this is, this is what they do. They throw around the, the, the daughter's a cop, the son in law's a cop, this and that. Yeah, this whole neighborhood's and, cops. Yeah, I live here. And, like, and so then it always gets turned against yeah. us somehow or some way because they pull all their weight. Okay. So, so I'm sure they made a phone call. That, that doesn't matter to me at all. I've arrested officers' families before. I'm not happy about that, but it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can't use that as a means. And there you go. That lets you know that he ain't for that bullshit.
Good police right there. He said, yep, I hear you, but I've arrested motherfucking uh, uh, cops before and arrested their family members before, and that's how it should be. If you fucking up and you doing some stupid shit and you assaulting motherfuckers, your ass do need to get locked up. Fuck that shit. And it's like, people, let me tell you something. Just because somebody say that they know a cop, they friends with a cop, they fucking a cop, they related to a cop, they son's a cop, they brother's a cop, they sister's a cop, they aunt's a cop, they uncle's a cop, they friend's a cop, that shit don't mean nothing. The law is the fucking law. And when you know the law, and you know when the motherfucker breaks the law, you're not, and especially when they name dropping, you're not only, they're not only putting them motherfuckers in a bad position, but they're putting them in a position where if you don't do something, then you can hold these motherfuckers accountable. And that's exactly what this judge did. He fucked up and his wife fucked up name dropping. Fucking name dropping got him fucked up. You know, so... So what, what I'm asking though is, ideal situation, what happens here? Ideal situation. Um, well, she bit uh, my arm. Okay, do you want her arrested? Yes. Sure. Okay. Yes. That, that's sure. She went at my wife and, and hit my wife. Okay, yes, that's, that's what I'm asking. Yes. I want to make sure. Yes. She we... swung first and so did okay. he. Okay. Yes, I do. And there you go. So now, doing a, a, being a good police officer, you got to realize that, hey, maybe this motherfucker's lying, so let me go and ask these other motherfuckers what the fuck happened, and then I'll ask the other witnesses what happened. But you already have enough now to where you're like, okay, somebody is going to go to jail. Somebody going to go to jail. Plain and simple. Okay. I'm half of the story from her. Yeah, I want their half of the story as well. Like, she, and she started mouthing yeah. off, so she went in cuffs. Um, Where do they live? There. He's, they're probably both going to end up going, just okay. as a heads up. I, I want to hear what right. they have to say first, but I don't see it not being that way. You hear that shit? He let the dog out the house. They dog know what the fuck they're doing. The dog go across the street and you said they start attacking your mother. Why you even know? If these are the worst motherfucking neighbors in the world, why the fuck are you over there? My daughter is a police officer. Okay. 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 Ashley and Moya. I don't know Dave Paul. Right. You have See? three police officers you want to hear start a story. And here's the thing. Oops. Oops. It's no point in even dropping their names right now. What? Why would you even put that shit out there? Why would you even put their name out there? Why would you even put them involved in some shit that you already have fucked up and went too far with? The crime has been committed already. Why would you drop the fact? Because you see, he conveniently left out the fact that he a fucking judge. But he too, but he damn show, and, he, and his wife too, they quick as fuck to drop the names and, oh, my daughter's the police, my son's the police. I don't give a fuck what they got to do with you breaking the law, bitch. Just because your son is the police don't mean you get to break the law. Fuck around with you. Seattle. I don't know. You got, you, you got officers Mullahan. I don't know who these guys are, but Maria's in the back of the car. Where does your daughter work for? She's in B District. My right? son's in C District. Okay. Gramalia's uh, my Grimalia's cousin. P. Okay. So, I mean, it's just... Yeah, that's probably not. Right, let, Ash, let me call you back. Let me tell them exactly what would happen because all the neighbors are out here and they could verify everything. There's like seven neighbors out here. All right. I come home. I called nine. Well, I first called D District. I said, listen, there's a, there's a car. They do this all the time. They block in the driveways. Is all it four just like cars. this? Yeah, all four of these cars are theirs. Okay. All four of them are. See that good police work right there? He said, just like this? Yeah. He's not blocking the driveway. He's not blocking the driveway. You can clearly see that. And they, you can see how much room they have. They edge in the driveway. They don't, nobody likes them in the street. They don't like anybody. So they edge in the driveway yeah. as close as they can. So I called up and I said, listen, yeah, a little tight for me getting in. He was like, ignore it. I go, a little tight getting in. Can you come down, go across the street, knock on the door, tell them to move the truck. They're from New Jersey. I'm not going to give them a freaking, you know, I don't want to give them a ticket. So... I'm walking, so as a way to walk the dog. We walk the dog, we come back, I pull the dog in the house, she goes across the street, I come out, drunk. the two girls and Joe are like in their face, so I come walking across the street, 
He goes, oh, you want to go? You want to go? So I am like, no, no, Jonah, bring Maria back. If they have it on the camera, he freaking. And that lets you know right there that that's a lie. Nobody just says, oh, I went over there to ask him to come move the car. And the guy comes at me and says, you want to go? So you know he lying. That's not how the shit went. You was drunk. You was mad. Your wife was running off at the fucking mouth. You was pissed off that it was harder for you to pull into your driveway. So that's how shit got out of hand. Wax me. Like, just pushes me backwards. Okay. I'm like, dude, you need to, like, calm down. You need to calm down. I freaking back up. I'm grabbing her. They start walking across the street. And they actually see the girl. She's going after the girls. I'm pulling her back. He comes over. And he freaking whacks me, like, slaps me across her face. So, wait. If he's pulling her back, then that means she was the aggressor then, wouldn't it? And then, all of a sudden, he got hit in the face just by coming to pull his wife back? That shit don't happen. And you know that big fat motherfucker with that striped shirt on. You know he all kind of soft ass motherfucker. He ain't gonna do shit. You can clearly see who the aggressive motherfucker is here. So I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? You ripped my freaking necklace off, okay? So I freaking push him. He comes after me. I move out of the way. Now I believe he did that after his wife got hit. Absolutely. Motherfucker hit my wife. It's on and popping. My wife don't fight. I don't give a fuck, if, especially if I'm there. My wife, you got a problem with my wife? The last thing you need to do is try to put your hands on her. I will knock a motherfucker clean out. Man or woman. Keep your hands, feet, and other objects to yourself. Shout out to DJ Just J. Fuck that shit. Ain't nobody gonna put their hands on my wife while I'm standing there. I don't give a fuck if you don't like her. You mad cause she fine. You don't like the fucking dress she got on. Bitch, you better say it from over there. You put your hands on my wife, I'm gonna knock your ass out. I'm just telling you, my, my wife don't fight. She's a lady. She don't fight. Fuck that. Unless she by herself. Then she you better go for what you know, baby. Cause I don't want you to get your ass whooped, but sometimes you might have to take a L, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Falls in my driveway. That's why I always got the, the, the bruise on it. He falls in my driveway. He gets up, he starts leaving. We're going our separate ways. The girls start fighting again. I grab my wife, we pull her back. The neighbors come out, they're like. You hear him tell on himself? So the girls were fighting already, which is how the shit kicked off. See? White bitch gone off that friends of wine, kicked off the fight. So now you know as a cop and just listening to what's going on, that lets you know that they were the ones that started fighting at first. So once they started fighting and you heard her tell you, the bitch came over here talking crazy and she put her hands on me. And that's when I still fucking defended myself. That's when shit went left. Like, are you kidding me? The one neighbor down here is like, listen, you gotta like, you know, ignore them, nobody likes them. That's what they do all the time. We didn't do nothing. We basically walked the dog, came back, and they come out of the house. They're like, you got an effing problem with a truck is parked? Now he's lying. No, I heard that when I was taking a dog in the house. Okay. My wife was still outside. She walked over. She goes, yeah, move the truck. They friggin' bolt from the porch. The girl's got her friggin' hand on my wife's throat, and that's when I walked over there. And that's when it all started. Okay. I mean, are you friggin' kidding me? They can't wait to start trouble. Talk to any those two neighbors. But and here's my thing. Exactly like Amanda said, I would be upset too. Yes, I would too. If you're making it difficult for me to pull in my or out of my driveway, fine. It's a better way to handle it. But, but there is a chance of a motherfucker not having to move shit and not just struggle. If I can't see coming out because you got this big dumbass truck, what am I going to do? What can you really do when a motherfucker's legally parked on the street? So the only thing you can do is call the police. You call the police and you tell them, look, officer, this guy has a driveway. He's parking here in front of my house and he's leaving his van out to the point to where it's very difficult for me to pull into this driveway. Now, Barring the fact that we don't fucking get along with him and nobody else on this block gets along with these motherfuckers, the last thing I want to do is hit this dude's car by accident 
or there'll be some type of altercation and now shit's going to be even more escalated. If you told me that as a police officer, I tell that dude, hey man, I understand that you motherfuckers don't get along and y'all got beef. Stop parking on his side of the street and stop motherfucking parking or blocking his driveway. Either you pull the fuck up or pull the fuck somewhere else down the road. Because the minute that dude hits your car, you gonna pitch a fucking bitch. So stop antagonizing them and parking there. That's what should have happened. Dogs don't live on the, live on the street, they know. Mm-hmm. Yellow knows, these guys know, he knows, the guy that was just here knows. Mm-hmm. They can't wait to start problems. Okay. okay? And listen, I'm good friends with Brian Brown. He's like, you always Mark, just friggin' ignore him. I did ignore him. I called and said, the truck is friggin' bark blocking. And what's the problem, too? This dude is a fucking judge. You know how the law works. You know how law enforcement works. Which should have been even more of a reason why he should have got his ass reprimanded. Fuck wrong with you, man. You have the driveway, and then when we come back, that's how it does. Mm. I'm talking like this kid's friggin' punch me in the face, and I'm getting a fat lip. Mm mm. So. That's the drink. But. It's slurred speech. I know. I wouldn't have my friggin' shirt ripped like this. He friggin' tore the shirt, grabbing me, and friggin' ripped my necklace off. Okay. Okay? Like, like, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm fighting the guy. Okay. I mean, I walked over to grab Maria. He goes, oh, you want to go tough guy? I'm like, no, Joe, I'm taking it away. Boom. And push. So, let me ask you this. Two, two questions. First off is how do we prevent something like this in the future? I'll do it a summer event. Okay. With these two, they, they, I mean, the whole, everybody, they start, next week we'll be with them. Okay. And they, we I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask some of these people because I, I want oh, some trust Because, I mean, I'm sure you understand, I'm getting. Get around the car and I'll bring her aside. And I didn't mean to tackle you, but I mean, you kind of threw my wife down on the ground pretty hard and I don't appreciate that. I understand that. All right? I really don't. If that, if... Now, here comes the arrogance of the judge. Now, the judge, the asshole judge that I was talking about, you about to see him come out right here. If I would do that to your wife and you're outside, you do the same thing. Sure, well, if you were a police officer okay. and she was screaming no, in my, my face. No, my daughter's a police officer. And I know what you guys are going through right now. And trust me, my daughter's a police officer, my son-in-law's a police officer, my brother, my, okay. my, and my son's a police officer. And if screaming at your daughter and approaching her like that, she would have done the same thing. No, you grabbed my wife from over there and dragged her over here, which is nah. not necessary. Okay. So you need to chill out about that. I'm just, well, I'm I have just a camera, so go. I'm it's, it's constructive all I don't care about your camera. Just give it a little constructive criticism, dude. Okay. Okay. Let me give you some constructive criticism. You want to drop another copper's name? You want to scream about you know Kamala the mayor? Why don't you shut the fuck up? Sorry, and you listen, listen, quiet. Shut the uh, goddamn uh, mouth. Okay. Your- <laughs> I like that dude. He was holding his mule till he couldn't no more all that time and said, "Fuck this. Fuck this." Hey CJ, let me tell you something. Don't spam my chat no more. Now. Nah. How about that? Last time, last warning. If you want to put that bullshit in here and you want to fucking try, you've been doing this shit all fucking night. Stop it. Or get the fuck out. You've been doing the shit, but now you you finally done got the attention that you want. Motherfucker, here it is. You've been putting shit in the comment section that ain't got nothing to do with what the fuck I'm talking about. Get the fuck out or just fucking stop. One or the other. Now post some shit again. God damn. Okay. You want to be difficult? You want to you want to say all these coppers and all these things? No, I don't want to make this look dirty. Is that what you want to do? Exactly. So how am I helping you now? How tell me? Tell me how can I help you? How shut the, shut up and let me talk to you, you old geezer. Shut up. Shut up. Man, let me talk to you. Since you had so much to say and you touch a cop, so let me talk to you. God, let me talk to you. God. Quiet. No. That's the that. He ain't hood enough to be in a fucking, in that judge's face like that. God, let me talk to you. He was so fucking pissed off. What you should have did, you should have two-fingered his ass. Y'all know what two-finger mean? And no, for your alphabet people, it's not what you think. In the hood, two-finger mean that you take these two fingers here, and you either put them very close into a person's face or 
you put them on this side up to a person's temple and you tell a motherfucker what time it is. Look here, man. <laughs> like if this they face, you be like, look here, dude. I'm trying to be nice to your motherfucking ass. You sit here name dropping fucking police officers. We got this shit on camera. You think this shit is cool? It's fucking embarrassing. Shut the fuck up. That's what the fuck I'm trying to tell you. You two finger the motherfucker. That's what you do. You're not done talking yet. Uh, this is Detective Constantino to bring the phone over to you and let you talk. I believe it's on, on speaker now. Oh, hey, Mark. They're saying that you pushed an officer. You didn't. You wouldn't do that, would you? You know what? When he when he was when he but it, dragged. But it, well, motherfucker sound like Porky Pig. Dragged yeah. Maria, when the two Look. girls ran Maria, he was dragging Maria across the street and actually was taking her down. Do you hear that? You hear this lying motherfucking judge? Be the first motherfucker to swear a motherfucker to oath. Be the first motherfucker to say you're under oath and lying in the under oath is is uh, uh you will be charged with perjury. And the first word out of his mouth is lying. They dragged her across the street, son-in-law. Motherfucker, ain't nobody dragged that bitch nowhere. They should have, but they didn't. Down on my front lawn, and I basically said, listen, just, like, talk to her, and I put, drag, well, he dragged Maria, when the two girls <laughs> ran Maria, he was dragging Maria well, across the street, and actually was taking her down on my front lawn, and I basically said, listen, just, like, talked to her and I pushed him and I said don't friggin tackle and here's the thing he already talked to the bitch he already told her ass when she was across the street when she was going across the street like shut the fuck up and just stop he was already telling her then he said if you don't stop it's gonna be bad for you and what did she say I don't care see Mark uh, uh, Gisanti if you'd have been able to just tell her one simple thing which would have been, shut your fucking pie hole, Marie. This shit wouldn't have happened, but you couldn't. And that's why your ass is in the backseat of the car. When I pushed him, I apologized to him, Mark, right after that, mm -hmm. because I said, listen. You didn't fucking I apologize. I respect you guys in law enforcement. You know, you know, I go, my daughter's a police officer, nah. my son-in-law's police officer, all my family's that. police officers. I mean, I just, the thing that freaks me out is that everything you do is going to be scrutinized because of your job. Well, Mark, I never mentioned anything about my job or who I was. You could ask any officer. I never mentioned anything like that. All I said was, my, I, all I said was. And that don't matter, dude. The fact of the matter is because of who you know who the fuck you are, you should be aware of that at all times and understand what the fuck you do is going to be scrutinized like it is now. Like I'm doing a show about you right now. Because you're a fucking judge. That's the point. You were supposed to be, at the very least, the smartest guy in this whole fucking situation, and you should have handled this shit the way that a judge should have. You should have been fair under the law. And the fact that you knew your ignorant, drunk, loud, obnoxious fucking wife got you into this bullshit over a fucking parking space is a fucking problem. That truly means you don't know what the fuck you doing and you don't have any fucking control of yourself and obviously none with your wife. It's fucking ridiculous. You let her loud mouth ass get not only herself put in cuffs, but you too. Then you had to pull a bunch of fucking favors to not get fucking prosecuted. And now what's happening? The shit is out. And now your ass is under the fucking uh, 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 micro, uh, microscope now. Fucking around with her over a parking spot. And because she want to lay hands on a bitch. Yeah, I, I understand that. And there it is. There it is. Now, check this shit out. This program contains graphic material, including hey. offensive language. Put that shit out. Why ain't this shit turning off? There we go. And there we go. So, check this out.
But what is next now for local Justice Mark Grisanti? He is the state judge who was caught on body camera video shoving a Buffalo police officer during a scuffle back in June. Our I-Team chief investigator, Charlie Speck, first revealed this video earlier this week after obtaining it through a Freedom of Information request. Tonight, Charlie shows us how Justice Grisanti is now moving forward with his case in court. Embattled State Supreme Court Justice Mark Grisanti recused himself from three court cases Thursday in light of a burgeoning scandal surrounding his conduct during a fight with his neighbors. If you don't get the cops over right now, you're going to have a problem. We're not doing that. We're not threatening that. He needs to get the cops off him. Law 360 first shit. reported the development, which involved three litigants who were suing the Buffalo Police Department. Reporter Frank Runyon spoke with attorneys and ethics experts who expressed surprise that Crisanti was never brought up on charges after the June scuffle. Some of the attorneys that I spoke to said well, he could have easily been arrested. He could have easily been charged yep. with um, obstructing governmental administration or disorderly conduct, at least. They've had clients um, that have been charged for less, they said. Yes, sir. The attorney said that that could create the appearance that the judge would side with police in cases before him, as well as pro-law enforcement comments that he made to his cousin, who is a Buffalo police detective while in the back of a police car. I respect you guys in law enforcement. You know, you know, I go, my daughter's a police officer, my son-in-law's a police officer, all my family's police officers. That's obviously hovering over all of this, this question. And here's the here's why I fought because the the per, the the group that I fought the most out of this, the attorney should have prosecuted him. They should have told him. I mean, and and here's the thing: in all fairness, and all professional courtesy, and all that shit, they should have said, "Look, judge, here's what we gonna have to do. Here's what we gonna do. We gonna prosecute your ass. We gonna give your ass. You gonna go before one of your other judges. They gonna give your ass a slap on the wrist." Maybe come up with some probation shit or some shit like that or give you a fine. Or they could have just said a fine. That's probably what they should have just did. Motherfucker, we're going to fine your ass a $1,000, uh, whatever the case, because the police officer's not pressing charges and we're going to clean this shit up. But motherfucker, you got to pay. I don't give a fuck if you charge them $2,500, $3,000, $5,000. Fuck that. He a judge. He, yeah, fuck that. He a judge. Make his ass pay five grand. The reason why you want to do that is because you going to satisfy the fucking neighbors and you as the attorney go and tell the neighbors, here's what we're going to do. Cause what he did was wrong and it was atrocious. We're going to fucking find his ass fucking $5,000. And if he ever does anything to you guys ever again, he will lose his fucking job on the bench. I want you to file a fucking harassment or put a fucking, uh, 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 what do they call that? A goddamn, um, what do they call the suit where you can't come in certain distance? A restraining order. We're going to put an order of protection on you motherfuckers. Him or his wife can't come on y'all side of the street. 500 feet or 300 feet, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Because the reason why I say you do that is because now the fact that y'all didn't, it makes the entire fucking department look terrible. And it opens up the door for a multi-million dollar litigation lawsuit which is probably what's happening right now. You know, did he get preferential treatment? I think for a lot of people, they feel, particularly if you look online, people feel that it's obvious that he got treated differently than a lot of the videos that we see um, of uh, black Americans um, being uh, beat up in some cases is being shot in some places being killed as for what course Crisanti plans to take for future cases his attorney did not respond to a request for comment for the i-team charlie speck seven eyewitness news and there it is but that's exactly what should have happened the prosecutors in the in looking out and doing what's best for the state county whatever the fuck they're at the in buffalo they should have fucking did that they should have been like no nah, you can't walk away from this one, Doc, because it's video footage and you fucked up. That's exactly what they should have said. You went too far, Charlie Murphy. Now your ass got to pay. We going to find the shit out your ass and hope for the best. Because this shit comes back and bites us in the ass and we got to pay millions of dollars because of your ass being fucking stupid. You and your fucking wife. You know what it is. We're going to hang you out to dry. So you better be the best fucking neighbor you possibly can be.
That's what you better do. You better fucking widen up the street so they can park there. You better build them another fucking parking spot somewhere. I don't give a fuck. But if this shit comes back to where it's a bad look and bad press for the for the fucking uh, city, your ass is on the line. Because what you did, you should have known better. You know the law and you know how the law works. You call the police. You call and file a, 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 a grievance. I don't give a fuck. You do everything but what you and your dumbass wife did. Going across the street to fight some motherfuckers because y'all don't like them. She's a fat bitch. <laughs> Shit, stupid, man. But that's pretty much what it was, man. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the show tonight. I had myself a really good time. I really, really, really did. I enjoyed myself. And um, I just want to thank everybody for taking out the time to come and check it out. I hope that this video helps somebody become a better version of themselves. I hope this shit helps Judge Grisante to become a better version of himself and his drunk ass wife. Stop going outside when you gone off that Franza. It ain't going to do you no earthly good. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it ain't going to do you no earthly good. Buffalo ain't got nothing. Tons of jobs left overseas. Went back to visit uh, after many years. Yeah, the only thing that's in Buffalo are wings. <laughs> that's all I got to say. Ain't nothing in Buffalo but wings, goddammit. I'm telling you. All right, y'all. I just want to say thank you. Matter of fact, let me check the uh, your cash. Y'all see if anybody... Show your boys some love. Make sure y'all click that like button. Click that subscribe button. We are over 6,500 subs. Let's go. We on the road to 10,000. We have got to do this, y'all. Let's keep subbing. Let's keep sending this out and keep getting people to join now. Let's do it. All right, my man, uh, Leighton Trep, hit your boy up with 20 bucks. He says, I know Mark. <laughs> I hope you don't. But if you do, that's wild as hell. He hit your boy up with 20 bucks. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. And also, my man left third. He said, East cul-de-sac versus West cul-de-sac beef. <laughs> left third, you was on tonight, Doc. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Hit your boy up with the hot five bucks. And let me check the PayPal. And we're going to get on out of here, man. I just want to say uh, I had a great time, guys. I love y'all. I appreciate everything that you guys do. Shout out to my mods. Thank y'all for doing such an amazing job. Shout out to my wife for sending me a really good story. I appreciate it, babe. All right, let's go ahead and let's see. Oh, my man, Jim Edwards, he said, I fear our first two. Hold on, let me read this. This shit, he got some shit here. He says, he sent your boy a buck. He sent me a buck and he says, I fear for our First Amendment and Second Amendment. White Republicans have way too much cuckold in them. They are slaves to the system, the media system, legislation, legislative, every system. They have way too much faith in the system. Thanks for the message. Hopefully YouTube will let you guys stay on. I doubt they will. I think they will get more bold and start to cut off voices like ours. <sighs> I would I, I can address that. So here's the thing. Here's the thing, uh, Jim. And thanks for the donation, man. You have to realize what is going on when you're talking about propaganda. Propaganda or, or spin, uh, controlling the narrative, and all of that stuff that you're talking about. That's what they do to try to make you think you have no power, that there is no hope. And that there is no other way. That's why they do it. Do you realize that before Hitler made his actual move, all he did was propaganda, put out flyers, talking bad about the Jews, talking about how the Jews are ruining everything, talking all of this shit. And the only reason why he did it that way is because if you tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. If you let a certain group of people get away with enough fuck shit, then when they make their big move, 
it'll already be pretty much in your head to where you were expecting it. Kind of like how you were talking. The system is what it is. And the system can be changed. The system can be fixed. It's up to us to do it though. We always have to be willing to be in a mindset to say, at any given time, I can and I will rebel. Just like how people are, do you realize how many people, in spite of the clear, factual evidence that something isn't right with this election, people are still willing to go along with it because they bought into the propaganda. They've listened to the lies long enough to where it has become the truth. That's why you have people just automatically say, why you don't like Trump? Cause he's racist. They go hand in hand. Ain't no other president hung out with more celebrities, more rap artists, more niggas than this one, but he's the racist. This president has hung out with more rappers than Barack Obama. He done hung out with more celebrities than Barack Obama. He's been talked about in music, in hip hop specifically, more than Barack Obama, but he's racist. The fact that you can even say that and not even look at the facts of it and say, how the fuck can this dude be racist and all he did was hang out and got talked about by niggas. But it's the propaganda. When you let the DNC and let the left say it long enough without retorting it, without responding to it, without saying that's a fucking lie, the lie becomes the truth. The lie becomes the truth. That's it. When you're talking about freedom of speech, when you're talking about uh, uh, making sure that our government and shit like that is staying intact and does what the fuck it's supposed to do instead of what somebody else wanted to do. When you talk about Second Amendment rights, those are the things that we should always be willing to go and fucking die for at the drop of a fucking dime to where people will know and the message will be clearly sent. Don't fuck with them when it comes to this. Talk all the other shit you want to talk. Say all the other shit you want to say. Don't fuck with America when it comes to their freedom. Don't fuck with America when it comes to their guns. And don't fuck with America when it comes to their safety. Because they will go ape shit on you. That's the message that needs to be sent. That's the, that's the way that we need to be perceived. Because when you don't and you try to be the nice guy, you get fucked and you do finish last. You are treated like the cuck. That's why it's so important to do what we're doing, say what we're saying, and to stand up for what we believe in and what's right. That's exactly why it's so important. We can't let nothing make us seem like it's hopeless. We can't let nothing make us see, make it seem like it ain't gonna work. We can't let anything ever encroach or infringe on what it is that we hold dear, plain and simple. And you have to always be willing to die for that shit. Just like how Tupac in Juice, he told them niggas straight up, I want the juice. I want motherfuckers to respect me, fear me, and to fucking have straight reverence for me. And I'm a kill to do it. You got to be willing to die for that shit is what he said. Because he got tired of being overlooked. He got tired of being a nobody. He got tired of being that motherfucker that got beat up, that got shoved to the side, ran over. He got tired of the shit. So he said, fuck that. I'm going to become the motherfucking animal. Just like Bane said, no one cared until I put on the mask. Before he put on that mask, didn't nobody give a shit. Once he put that mask on, he became the shit. To the point to where all he had to do was put his fucking two fingers on a motherfucker's, on the back of a motherfucker's neck. I mean, on the, on the side of a motherfucker's neck and say, 
do you really feel that you're in control? Do you really think that you're in control, that you're running the show? And all he did was rest his hand on this motherfucker's neck, on his shoulder right here. Do you understand that? A rich, powerful motherfucker got humbled with a few fingers. Because Bane's resolve. Bane wasn't thinking, oh, ain't no hope with this rich person. This, this, this ain't, he ain't gonna be able to, we can't do, we can't stop him. He rich. We can't stop him because he's the system. Do you really think that you're in control? That's what it was. Even when there is a thing that seems like it's the most powerful thing, when you know what the fuck is in your heart and what the fuck is true in you, you will tell a motherfucker, let's not stand on ceremony here, Bruce. So you think darkness is your ally. You merely adopted the dark. I know you, motherfucker, is what he was saying. I was born in it, molded by it. By the time I was a man, the <laughs> light was nothing more to me but blinding. Theatricalities and deception. Powerful agents for the uninitiated. But we are initiated, aren't we, Bruce? That lets you know his resolve was way better than Bruce's. Now, to everybody else in Gotham, everybody thought Batman was the shit. But Bane knew he was a whole ass nigga. Bane looked at him and said, I got this. Walked up to him holding his motherfucking vest. <laughs> like, let's not stand on ceremony here, Bruce. Let's get it in. Let's do this. I've been waiting for this. I've come to fulfill the destiny of Ra's al Ghul. He knew what the fuck he was going to do. Plain and simple. Up against who everybody else thought was the coldest motherfucker in Gotham. That's Batman. He do. He got all these toys and all these gadgets. He got the system. One man broke him. Physically and mentally. He broke his spirit. And then he said, now I will break you and broke his back and then threw his ass in the very same fucking prison that he rose up from. That's his resolve. That's him knowing what the fuck he doing and what the fuck he's coming to do in his eyes, in his mind and in his heart is righteous and ain't nothing going to stop him. That's exactly what he was saying. You fight nothing held back. Admirable, but mistaken. I am the League of Shadows. Nigga, you ain't the League of Shadows no more. I am the League of Shadows. Batman walking around with fucking braces and shit, half-assing, fat as fuck, ain't doing his job. Resting on his laurels and let a young, fit, hard-working, determined motherfucker like Bane come and take everything from him. And the only reason why he made it back was because it was a movie. <laughs> Most motherfuckers don't make it back. I'm telling you, that's how you have to think. You have to believe in what you believe in to the point to where you're willing to put everything on the line for it. And you're going to stand and fight for it because it's what you believe in. And yes, I went off into a whole Batman and Bane analogy, but it fits. That's it. That's all. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all for stopping by. This was a really good show. Till next time. Oh, till we meet again. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. 
until we meet again. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let the church say amen. Shanda All right, y'all. I'll let y'all later. Love y'all. Peace. And I'm out. Let's get this music going. If I can find it. There it go. Is that it? Nope. Yep. There it go. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm out. Thank you, mods. Thank you to everybody that, that checked out the show. If you're watching this on the replay, click that like button. Click that subscribe button. And share this shit with somebody. Because sharing is caring. Yeah, man.